standby for manual transmission in three, two, one. Attention. Seven Commanders, Nuggets, and Mercenaries. Manus Dextra here with my first impressions of Mech Warrior 5 Heroes of the Inner Sphere. So, in my last video, I promised to find some alternative sci fi ground combat to do while Elite Dangerous Odyssey is getting sorted out. And this is it. I was really looking forward to this game when it came out in December of 2019 since I love me some big stompy robots and this is the first mech warrior game to come out in almost 20 years. But much like Odyssey, it had a very rough start and much like with Odyssey, I gave it a hard pass. Flash forward a year and a half later and the game is much improved with a brand new DLC, Heroes of the Inner Sphere, which adds a new open-ended career mode. And this is what I was really waiting for. So this new mode plays a lot like the career mode added to Battletech's 2017 game. For those who may not be familiar, MechWarrior and Battletech take place in the same game universe. Battletech refers to the universe overall and the old school tabletop and turn based computer games, whereas Mech Warrior refers to the guys and girls who pilot the mechs and the FPS action games such as this one. So the year is 3015 and the Inner Sphere is in the throes of the Third Succession War as five successor states fight over the carcass of the once mighty Star League. It's a dark time for humanity, but a great time to be a mercenary. In Heroes of the Inner Sphere, you'll start out with a single lance of medium and light mechs and a dropship. Now all you have to do is make your fortune. Remember, Nuggets, the Op 4 isn't the enemy, it's the job. This is a mercenary company. Anything that keeps us off the job, damage, injuries, repair and travel time, that's the real enemy standing between you and your paycheck. So the game itself runs great on my GTX 1080 Super Spud and the combat is fun and accessible so far. Like most modern PC action games, it plays really well with keyboard and mouse, so if that's your preferred input method, you can probably hit the ground running. However, if you're a really old school gamer such as myself, you'll probably want to take the time to set up a HOTAS. This is totally possible, but be aware you might have to edit some text files if you need to tweak dead zones and such. If you have problems getting the legs and torso to sync up, mechs drive sort of like a tank with a turret and legs. It's probably because your stick needs calibrating or a slightly bigger dead zone. Check the description for useful guides and links for setting up controls. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Mech Warrior content. I'm going to be playing it anyway, so I might as well post it here. The game is single player PvE, but you can play co-op with up to three other humans. There's cross-platform play so PC and Xbox players can play together. 
Also, players with the base game only can access DLC in co-op. If you're on the fence about trying this game, you can access it along with the DLC for free on Xbox Game Pass. But really, with the new open-ended career mode, cross-platform co-op, and mod support, I'd say it's well worth the $50 asking price on Steam. But that's just me. I am a freak for big stompy robots. You can watch and decide for yourself. position. Now be released from manual control. 
Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation. You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation.